Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, we will be discussing about the third problem of today's bi-weekly contest, Find Zor Beauty of the Array. The problem states that you are given an array nums and you need to return the Zor Beauty of the nums. Now, Zor Beauty is defined as the Zor of all the effective values of all possible triplets, right? So, effective value of all possible triplet. So, for a single triplet, the for a single triplet i, j, k, the effective value is determined as this particular expression. So nums of i or nums of j and nums of k, right? So for every possible i, j, k pair, you need to find its effective value. And then after finding effective value, you will just jar all of that values and then return the answer, right? So for example, let's say this is your array nums. Now you need to find all possible triplets. So number of triplets could be there are eight possible triplets because every index, every i, j, k, like every or each of these i, j, k can have two values, either the first one or the second one. So there are eight possible indexes as shown here. Now the effective value of each of those indexes would be calculated as this expression nums of i or nums of j and nums of k so for 0 0 0 it would be 1 and 1 or 1 and 1 so after calculating the effective value of all of this 1 0 1 4 1 4 0 4 you will just draw all of this so after drawing all of this you will get the final value 5 which is the final draw beauty of the array and you will return 5 as the answer right so that's the problem. Now, how to solve this? So, let's say nums of i or nums of j or nums of k, each of these is 2 bit binary number, right? So, these numbers are decimal, right? But you have to find or and like whenever you, whenever any bitwise or, or bitwise and or any kind of operations are there like this, it is always wise to convert the given number into binary because these operations are defined well on binary, right? So let's assume that each of these binary numbers like have two bits only, like given num given question has lot more b bits, like it, it can have at most 30 bits because the number is 10 to the power 9, but for now let's say there are two bits, right? Now you want to find this particular expression this particular expression for these numbers. So let's say this is nums of i, this is nums of j, this is nums of k, right? Now, while finding this expression, one thing that you should note is this bit operation and this bit operation are completely independent because the given op op operations like or, and, and doesn't have the concept of carry. So if it is like addition or subtraction or multiplication, right, it has a concept of carry, carry over to the next uh, significant digit. But or and and doesn't have a concept of carry, right? So because it doesn't have a concept of carry, whatever result of this would be, of this bit would be, will be independent of whatever result of this bit would be, right? So you can, we can solve these two bit independently. That's what the final thing that we are trying to uh, get at. So because each of these operations and and or and finally there is JOR as well. So JOR also doesn't carry over to the next significant digit. And because that is not the case, each of these digits are independent. Each of these bits are independent. So you can solve for this first last significant least significant bit first and then you can solve apply the same approach to solve the next significant bit and so on and so forth. So let's say after uh, solving this, you said, okay, uh, after solving this piece of information separately, I get that, okay, there are five, uh, like, so, sorry, the, the final, uh, final output is one at this particular position. And let's say final output is one at this particular position as well. So what would be your answer? The answer would be simply the decimal representation of this one and one, right? So that would be your answer. So that's what we are trying to do. We are trying to reduce the problem by saying that each of these bits are independent. Now, because these bits are independent, we can solve them independently. 
Now, notice that if we are solving them independently, we don't need to consider nums of i, nums of j, nums of k. We can just consider this as one bit. So this is one bit which can be either zero or one. Similarly, this is one bit which can be either zero and one. And similarly, this is again one bit which is which can be either zero or one. So every uh, every number here has either zero or one as a value, right? Nothing else. So that's what we have reduced the problem to. So what we have what we are saying now is then uh, the current problem now becomes each of these nums of i is either zero or one, right? Each of these nums is either zero or one, and we have to just solve for this particular uh, bit. And once we solve for this particular bit, we can apply the same process for all the all the bits, and then finally return the decimal representation of the output, right? So because each of these are each of these numbers or each of these nums are either zero or one, how many different expression of these given expression is possible? Like how many different uh, values of this given expression is possible? So let's just uh, fill all of them. So each of these number are zero or one, right? We just saw saw that. So i can be either zero or one. It can be zero or one. It can be zero or one. So finally, there are eight possible combinations, right? These are the eight possible combinations: zero, 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 one, zero, one, zero, and so on and so forth. Now, for each of these combinations, you can easily find out the what is the output, right? What is the output of this expression? So let's say the first one: zero or zero, which is zero, and zero, which is zero. So basically, it is and, right? So because it is and if it is zero the output will be zero so basically for each of this which are zero the output would be zero right now for each of this which are which uh, this is one this should this the result of this one should also be one right so basically you can see for this particular case the output is zero because zero or zero or zero which is zero and one which is zero again so basically if you try to find out the output of all these cases you will see these values right now out of these values what we are interested in we are like we want finally what we want we want jor of every possible values right so x jor 0 is g is uh, sorry x let's just move so x jor 0 is equals to the x right so basically jor Zor actually does nothing with zero, so we can simply ignore zero at all. Like we can simply ignore zero, and you can simply consider one. If there are odd number of ones, so notice that the output can be either zero or one because every number here is zero or one. So final output of this expression would be either zero or one. So based on that, the final output is zero and one, a zero or one. So if you do zors if you do zors continuously you will be zoring one or zero and as we mentioned before like zoring zero would give you the exact same number so zero we can ignore now there is only one you need to just zor all the ones here so if there are even number of ones the answer would be zero the like zor of all all of this would be zero if there are odd number of ones the zor of all of this would be one so basically what it boils down to how many number of ones are there in this expression if the number of ones is even the final output would be zero if the number of ones is odd the final output would be one again why this is the case because x or x is zero right and x or zero is x so we because x or zero is x we can simply ignore zero altogether and uh, x or x is zero so basically all the even values would cancel each other so x here is one so all the even values would cancel each other and finally what we will get is we will get the last one so basically if there are even if we want to see how many ones are there is it odd or it is or is it even that's what we want to see now we can see there are only three cases where the value is one so let's just talk about these three cases separately now so uh, Let's just remove this here. Okay. Now, these are the three cases. One nums i is zero, nums j is one, and nums k is one. Second case is nums i one, nums j zero, nums k one, and third case is all of them are one. Now we need to just see 
how many this kind of triplets would be there how many triplets would be of this kind and how many triplets would be of this kind so can you count this very easily right like you want to just find how many triplets are there which are of this kind so basically you want how many numbers are there which are zero right or that let's say the number that again there are two possible values right either zero or one so let's say there are x number of indexes which have value zero and there are y number of indexes which have value one so how to count how many occurrences of zero one one would be there it is very simple you just say there are x possible ways to fill this particular index right because x number of x number of zeros are there so there are x possible ways to fill this index there are y possible ways to fill this index and there are y possible ways to fill this index right so total triplets which would have this configuration would be x into y into y right similarly if you find this it would again come uh, come out as x into y into y and this last one it will come out as y into y into y so you will sum all of this and you will get how many number of ones would be there again notice we are just trying to solve for one bit and because we are trying to solve for one bit each number is either zero or one right so number of zeros which are number of numbers which are zero is x number of numbers which are one is y so we just say okay there are how many triplets are there which follow this particular pattern like zero one one so this would be x into y into y and similarly how many triplets are there which follow this pattern again y into x into y which is again x y y and finally y into y into y so if we just sum this entire thing up we will get how many number of ones would be there at the end notice all other triplets like only these three triplets would, gi would give us one all other triplets are giving us zero so if we sum this particular thing up we will get how many total ones would be there at the end so if this sum would be even then the final output is zero right and if this sum would be odd the final output would be one right so that's what we have to do we just find out, we we just need to find out the sum of this and then just find out whether it is odd or even right so let's just take an example let's say uh, this example only one and four right so how will you write one one will be written as zero zero one right and uh, what about four four would be one zero zero right so now let's just solve for this bit first uh, this this particular bit first so how many ones are there number of ones is one and how many zero are there number of zero is zero so basically sorry number of zero is one so x is one y is one so what is the value of x y y x y y and y y y total sum would be three right so one into one into one one into one into one and one into one into one so total sum would be three so there are three ones at the end so if there are three ones at the end this output of this particular bit would be one right because there are odd number of ones so for this everything is zero so you don't need to worry about this you it will be zero now here zero one one so x is zero right number of zero is zero uh, sorry number of zero is one and number of one is also one so again if you uh, try to find the values here like value of this particular ex expression it would again come as three and because there are even number of uh, even num sorry odd number of uh, odd this is odd so there there will be odd number of ones and hence this value would be one so final output would be the decimal representation of 101 which is 5 and this is our answer right so hope this entire thing makes sense basically we have simplified the problem by saying that each of this bit are independent and why we are able to do that because the operations that we have to do zor and and or all of them doesn't support carry forward right and because each of these bits are independent everything here is either 0 or 1 so because everything here is 0 or 1 we can simply find out what are the what are the all the possible combinations and of all possible combinations we can find out which one are giving us 1 right because 0 would not contribute anything let's say this is 0 so this will not contribute anything to the result right so we want we are interested in the values which are 1 so we just saw that these three patterns gives us 1 and finally we find out 
how many of these patterns would be there and this would simply be the number of zeros and number of ones this, this would depend on number of zeros and number of ones so that's how we found out how many total patterns are there uh, of each of these types and finally we sum all of this up so whatever we get this this denotes that how many number of ones would be there at the end like how many number of ones will be there in the triplet so or how many number of ones are, are there how many number of ones are there at the end of this calc of the calculation of this expression right so based on that we just figure out if there are even number of ones the answer is zero like everything would cancel out each other if there are odd number of ones the output of that particular bit is one right so let's look at the pseudo code the pseudo code or the code itself the code is very similar we are calculating things for each of the bit independently right again we need to just find out x and y this is x this is y right so we just find out x and y by just iterating over all the numbers and looking at their jth bit right we are iterating over all the numbers and we are looking at the jth bit if it is set we are incrementing set bits if it is unset we will say we are incrementing unset bits and finally we find out the value of this particular expression which is x y y plus x y y plus y y y which is this and we check if it is if this modulus 2 is 1 uh, then this bit this ith bit or jth bit will be set in the answer and we will ju just set it in the answer right so hope this entire solution makes sense if you have any doubts in this problem please post them in the comment section below i would have to answer if you like the video give it a thumbs up and do subscribe if you haven't already and i will see you in the next one thank you